Have you ever wondered why an LP used to be referred to as an album? And that goes right through to the present day where uh, a new release on LP, and there are such things coming out again now, of, of a pop group, say, will be referred to as an album. The Beatles produced albums and there were and there was there was a sense of an album being a, a whole artistic creation built up of a number of items that of course manifested themselves on the record as tracks. Well the history of this is 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 demonstrated here because in the early days of recorded sound uh, when it was an expensive preoccupation to buy recorded music and to play it, uh, works such as these, the Borjak Slavonic Dances and Mozart, a uh, single Mozart quintet here, was produced in, quite literally, an album of, containing a set of records. So this particular string quintet uh, is produced on one, two, three, four discs in an album that you would pay extra for. You could buy the records as single items, but uh, if you wanted the album to go with it, uh, that costs money. Now, here, this set is an interesting one. Vortex Savonic Dances. Now, you wouldn't probably want to listen to these on 78 now because there are so many lovely and modern recordings of them. But they're sort of interesting in that they're played by the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra, so you can't get more authentic than that. Um, but just as an article, this is a beautiful thing, this album. We've got sleeve notes at the beginning and uh, how many records in this set? Well, you can get an idea there. Uh, about eight and nine, probably more. Uh, the interesting thing about this album is that each sleeve obviously contains a record, but because of the varying lengths of the movements of the Slavonic dances, some of them don't need a 12 inch record and are on 10 inch ones. And you can see here that each album sleeve has two pockets. You use the front one if it's a 10 inch record and the back one if it's a 12 inch record and that will centralise the label in the hole there and these rivets are here to make sure that the edges of the record don't get caught in the binding and get broken. So let's find one with a 10 inch record in, there we are. So that's the record contained in that particular sleeve. I'm going to play one of these. And the one I've selected is Slavonic Dance number 10 in E minor. I like the ones in minor keys.
so that's the Slavonic dance. A uh, bit of a change in, in cheery tune diet, but perhaps uh, that will be refreshing. But I thought you'd like an insight into the background of albums and what they're all about. Now you can imagine, even a modest collection of classical music, just to have, say, ten symphonies on record, uh, you'd need a great big shelf capable of holding a lot of weight. I actually have um, a set of uh, Handel's Messiah on 78, which someone gave me. And uh, that's, I don't know how many records that is, um, about 15, I think. Uh, another quite interesting thing about listening to these old recordings is hearing how the styles of playing have changed. And the string players, Van Lennis particularly, I'm sure, will have picked up listening to that. The, the, the glissandi and, and portamentos that figured uh, in the standard style of playing in those days that you, you wouldn't get in, in an orchestra now. If you, if you started making noise like that, people would be turning around seeing who it was. <laughs> anyway, cheery tune for today, a bit of a change. We'll be back on the normal cheery tune um, diet tomorrow. Bye for now.